Hey everybody, it's Pastor Alan Bailey here at Gathering Church, Wednesday night online service. I'm so glad that you're here. We're going to be watching a message. What we're doing is we're taking old series, old messages, actually some more recent messages since we've been back in the building. We're going to start playing those on Wednesday nights as replays. We get a lot of requests for things. We get a lot of requests for audio and video and people just want to uh, watch uh, the video as they read their notes or they want to follow along and maybe grab something they didn't grab in the last service. So tonight is that night. If you're here, if you're, uh, if you're on Facebook or if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit us on chat. Let us know that you're here. Somebody's monitoring this. If you have a prayer request, you can do that through chat or you can go to gatheringchurch.life and you can send us something there. We're always here for you and we're grateful that you're here tonight. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into the message and I'll see you very soon. All right. Well, that's what we're going to we're going to talk today about getting it back uh, back into faith. Last week, we opened up a little bit of a series. I didn't expect it to be a series, but but it's going to turn into a series uh, <clears throat> on faith. I don't really have a title or anything like that, but we're going to get right into it. You know, faith is one of those things uh, that we really don't understand how it really works. We have taught faith, especially those of us that are part of the word of faith. We've taught faith so strong and, and almost so hard that, that if you don't believe like I believe or flow like I flow or say what I say or prophesy like I prophesy or do this or do that, then you're not really in faith. Well, the truth is the Bible says you have to work out your own salvation or your own walk of faith with fear and trembling. That doesn't mean that you're afraid of God. Please understand that means that you have a great respect for what you allow in you and what you allow to come out of you will affect your life by the anointing of faith on you. That's what that's talking about. So you should have a great respect and a healthy respect for God. So what God says comes out of you, so what God expects for your life shows up in your life. Amen? So that's what we want to deal with today. <clears throat> um, go ahead and take your Bibles. I, I do have some announcements to make at the end of service. Don't let me forget that. Uh, go in your Bibles to the book of Colossians. Uh, chapter 2, verse 5, Colossians 2, verse 5, <clears throat> and this is, this is Paul speaking, Colossians 2 and 5, he says, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, joying and beholding your order and steadfastness, steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Now, Go, don't jump there yet, but I want to read Romans 1 and 16 to you. Romans 1 and 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, say believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein, uh, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, and as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Faith, 101. Faith is only where the will of God for your life is known. You have to know what God is saying for you. You have to get to a place where you're recognizing what the Holy Spirit's talking about, talking to you about. Because look, all of us could tell stories about businesses and jobs decisions and things that we've done that made no sense. It was absolutely ridiculous to do what we did, but yet here we are. It was ridiculous for us to start a church in our living room. They told us nothing will grow down by the river. Why are you go? All kind of things. But here we are, and and it's not an issue of being the the, the having the biggest lights or the most pros, pro, uh, most prosperous or the biggest crowd. It's about being in His will. See, when you're in His will, that is the best place to be. And the only way to do that, please listen to what I'm about to say, because if you don't get anything else, this is the most important point: to walk by faith. First of all, it's the will of God. You have to know the will of God for that moment of your life. If God's told you to start a car, car lot, go start a car lot. Be, be in what he's told you. However, you have to take ownership of that faith for it to work. You have to. No ownership, no outrage. What do I mean by that? No ownership, no outrage. Uh, if you go and you hop in your car, and you go up to Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and you rent a car to go cross-country, you're going to treat that car a little different than you would treat your car. If that car caught on fire, you're just going to hop out and get your luggage out and say bye. 
if if it's if it's your car, you're gonna grab spit bottles, you know, just trying to put it out. You know, you Walker County, you know, you got spit bottles. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to lighten y'all up, y'all. I know, listen, it's heavy in here. Let's lighten it up a little bit. But but you have you you treat it differently. Um I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be straight. I'm going to be very straight with y'all. I'm driving Cameron's old work truck right now. You think I treat that thing like my old work truck? No, I throw crap all in the floor of his truck. You know why? It ain't mine. I clean it out, but I, whatever. Because there's no ownership there. But when you take ownership of something, you let somebody throw something in my floorboard. Hey, get, the, get, get with your teeth. Get that out. Because if you own it, you look at it differently. And God's trying to get you to own your faith, to own what He talks to you about, to take it. Quit saying God's in control. That's not true. Put yourself in a position to where you hear what He said about you and you're now putting Him in control because you're saying, this is what you expect from my life. Now align me up to where I'm moving into that. Because you, you can hear God about a lot of things that you never move into because you never put any action, because you never take ownership. Everybody likes to about what God said and what God, oh, God's going to do this and, and I have this and, and this is my call and I'm anointed and I'm this. What are you doing? What, what do you own? I own my house. So don't, you, I don't want nobody just rolling my yard. Pilar? I know it was a long time ago. With my wife sitting in the living room watching, not even knowing what's going on, rocking a baby. <clears throat> but I got her back, didn't I? <laughs> I got her back. Anyway, the point is, is what you own, you take care of. Now, this is what I really need to get into you today. If you, if you open up, if you open up your heart and you decide you want to sow something into somebody, and you really, really do it the right way, then once you let go of that seed, you don't care about it anymore. Because you know you've done what the Lord's asked you to do, right? Now, <clears throat> where God is taking us as a church and as Christian people in this nation, it will require supernatural effort. Because God needs His church to be His church, not just people that go to church. God needs us to be at a place to where we understand our authority, our anointing, and our power. Because if you are in the household of faith, and your faith is in Him, and you're trusting in Him, then what goes on around us, good, bad, or indifferent, shouldn't change what we expect for our lives because God has said. Are y'all is it, are y'all awake? God has said. God has said. I, I, I don't know how many of y'all were here before a service. Uh, I was in there listening 2013, some of y'all weren't, weren't even, we didn't even know each other, 2013. 2013, I don't even think we had a stage yet. <clears throat> Pastor Tracy Harris was here, it was one of, them, one of them weekends that he preached till midnight, and then on. <laughs> but he had preached for about three hours, and was about to walk into that office. And about the time he got to that office, everybody in the room, and I'm talking about people that didn't even know nothing about the Holy Ghost, felt this it's almost like we couldn't stand. And he walked back out and he said, get me a chair. And for the next 32 minutes, he started speaking what the Lord was saying. I was listening to this morning. I had no idea in 2013 he was talking about today. I'm going to play it for you. I'm going to put it on YouTube so y'all can hear it. It will blow your mind what God was preparing us for. But to also know that in that, God was also saying, remember who you are. Remember who you're connected to. Remember what covers you. Remember what you put in you and let that come out of you. Remember that you're a part of the kingdom, not a part of a nation. You are a nation. <clears throat> Listen to what I'm saying to you. You are a nation. You are a king. The Bible says that Jesus is the king of kings. Lord of lords. Not over presidents. You are a king. You are a Lord, little K, little L. But He is the King of kings. He wants you to flow like Him. He wants you to operate like Him. He wants you to speak like Him. He wants you to enjoy life. The only time Jesus didn't enjoy life was around religious folks. 
around religious people, he he just he just oh he, he just didn't he didn't handle it well, which makes me feel better. <clears throat> Listen to me, I want to say this. I'm I'm going to say a few things today, and and I just want them to kind of to kind of settle in. Adam's fall, and I don't want to get into my teaching on Adam and all of that. But Adam's fall is where the church is at today. And I want, if you can write this down, I want you to write this down. Because Adam's fall was from discerning to learning. He had to learn how to create his life, which was hard for him, versus discerning what the Lord was saying, which made it easy for him. See, we want to make out like this fall was a major sin, and it was, but it wasn't on purpose, and I don't have time to get into that. But it was from discerning to learning. We are in a church today, and I'm talking about nationwide, where we preach whipped cream sermons, and people halfway learn something, and nobody can discern what's going on around them. We have got to get back to a place that we can discern in our life what's going on, who we're connected to. We have ownership of what we're called to. We're, uh, is this ministering to you at all? Because when you discern things, things change for you. I want to tell you all a quick story that happened to me just this week. And I hesitated on sharing this, and I don't have the picture to put on the screen, but uh, this is very personal to me. And I wasn't going to share it, but the Lord, right before I walked out, the Lord said, you need to be prepared to, to share this. And, and as, I, as I talk to you about this, I'm, I'm going to be very honest as a pastor. First of all, people who are ignorant, and I don't mean stupid, but ignorant, don't understand what a pastor really goes through. They, they have no, the man at last, dad was a preacher, he gets it. They have no idea. They think we work two hours a week on Sunday and Wednesday. That's what they think. They have no idea that we don't sleep. They have no idea that when the phone call comes at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's not somebody saying, hey, I'm sending you a check. You know, it's not, it's, always, hey, I got a hangnail. You know, it's, it's dumb stuff, but then it's big stuff, and it's always something. And especially in this election cycle, uh, and the Becoming Center guys will tell you this, about two weeks ago, I started getting real heavy. I wasn't, I was kind of convinced what happened was going to happen. Everybody else was like, there's no way Trump's going to lose. And we made jokes about it. I said four more years, but I started feeling heavy, not because I care about the election, because God is the one who ordains leaders. We need to remember that. We need to remember that. But also because of the fear and heaviness on people for their finances and their businesses and their jobs and their health. And we got COVID and, and we're going back to Obamacare. Don't get me started on all that stuff. But here's what you got to understand. When that heaviness starts coming on to you because you care about people, we're not always good at casting that off because I love every single one of you so much. But I am not your Jesus. And I had hit a, I hit a wall. And I think it was uh, Tuesday morning or Wednesday. It wasn't election day. I think it was Wednesday. Do you remember what day it was? Anyway, so this is my story. I am... It's 4 a.m. I have to be at the uh, I have to be at the Becoming Center. No, it was it was, uh, it was Thursday morning, I believe, because I had to relieve Trevor. Trevor had to go to work. I stand in my yard at 4 a.m. I walk out to Cameron's truck and I'm clean. You know, I know I got to clean some trash out of it because I'm throwing some trash in it. And uh, so I get to the truck and I'm getting some stuff out. And then I'm like, you know what? It's early. I'm just just kind of talking to Jesus a little bit. And this is and I'm not trying to be too graphic, but you need to know. I, I'm standing there, and I'm like, ah, you know, it's, it's early. I need, I, I don't have, I'm, I've got to head to the Becoming Center. I'm busy. It's cold. Now i got to go to the restroom. I can't get back in my house. I mean, I can, but the keys are in the truck, and it's way over there. <laughs> and, and there's, well, you just don't want to walk over there to get it. So i got three acres and nothing but trees, so I'm like, got a whole bathroom to myself. <laughs> she said, oh, my Lord, you hear that? So, yes. If you can't pee in your own yard, you're not a man. Just saying. I'm just saying. We ain't editing that either. Leave it there. Because that is true. You are not a man. If you can't. Anyway. 
Hey, I hope you're enjoying the message tonight. We are. We're here in class at the Becoming Center watching it together. Uh, a lot of people are, are already communicating, and it's such a great time to be able to just go back and revisit some things the Lord has spoken to us as a church body. I want you to know that we're here for you, we're praying for you, and we hope that you finish this message strong. Get out of it everything you need to get out of it. Remember, there's no distance in faith, and when you get your position correct, God can do such amazing things in your life. I will see you at the end of this. Have a great rest of the service. And, and I'm talking to the Lord, and the Lord says, look up. Now, under, I'm, I'm painting this picture to tell you this one thing. God will speak to you at the most inopportune times if you will listen. And he, he said, look up. So now we got coyotes, and we've been having some trouble. So I'm looking around. I've got my pistol out, you know. And that's tr- I mean, it's just the whole, the whole scenario is funny if you think about it. And the Holy Spirit stopped, and I felt the apprehension. He said, I said, look up. And I looked up, and I saw the most beautiful thing outside of my children I have ever seen in my life. The, and if, you, if you've never seen, I've never seen, never even heard of it. But the moon was perfectly lit, and around it was a circle. And if you want to, if you want to see it after church, let me know. I got it on my phone. I think the girls have got it too. Don't y'all have it? Ask, get one of my kids. They all got it. It was just a perfect circle around the moon. In between that circle and the moon, you could see the stars clearer than I've ever seen them in my life. And I'm not joking. Y'all know I don't embellish. It was unbelievable. And on the outside of the circle, it looked normal. It looked it was great, wonderful, but it just... Anyway, and I heard the Lord audibly, and I don't say that lightly because I've only heard him five times in my life audibly. And the Lord audibly said to me, I'm clearing out every obstacle. And you, your family, and your ministry, and those that stay connected are about to be under an open heaven forever. I cried all the way here. I cried eating a waffle. I cried drinking a protein drink. Because I take ownership of that. I don't care who's in the White House. I do because I I have a civic mind. I don't care about whether I make a million bucks or ten. I'm under his open heaven. And there's things I can walk in with him that money can't buy me, that relationships can't get me. There's a place of peace with him that I can't describe. And I saw it clearly. I saw that there's a place where we think we're, we're prosperous and peaceful and things are wonderful, but then there's something clearer. And I'm just telling you, I cried so bad, I called April. April started crying. She woke all the kids up. Four o'clock in the morning, they're out there taking pictures. Well, when you look it up, because I didn't look it up, I had to go to work. It's called a lunar rainbow. Isn't that what it's called? Very few people have ever seen it. My whole family saw it that night or that morning. Very few people have ever seen one. A lunar rainbow. Do you, you do know what the rainbow means, right? It ain't the rainbow coalition, praise the Lord. It means that God will not cause destruction. Let me explain something to you, and then I'm wrapping this thing up. Those of us who walk by faith must learn to live by faith. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to live it. You have to take ownership of what God has said to you. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit. God is here with us at all times. There was the point of Jesus. And beholding your order, the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Go to Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Remember, Adam's fall was from discerning to learning. See, I discerned something. I discerned something early Thursday morning that I just couldn't learn. Mark, 30, Mark 4, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto him, Let us pass over to the other side. You all know this scripture. Next scripture. <clears throat> and when they had sent, uh, sent away the multitude, he had been preaching, they took him, uh, even it was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. Pay attention to this. He went, and there were also other little ships. Next verse. And there was a great storm, and it beat the ship that was now full. It was full of water, verse 38. And he was, in, he was asleep, Jesus was asleep, and they woke him up and they said this, Don't you even care that we die? 
Now, they had hung out with him now going on three years. You've all heard me talk about this multiple times. They had been around faith. They had experienced faith. They had eaten with faith. They had talked with faith. They had walked with faith. But they had taken no ownership of faith. Because when pressure was on, they thought faith itself didn't care. But yet here we are. Don't you even care? And Jesus said, next verse, pay attention to this now. And he arose and he rebuked the wind and he said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Look at this. He rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea. Rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea. The wind was unnatural. The sea was a natural reaction of what was unnatural. You have unnatural things happening in your life that you're just expecting to go away that God's expecting you to speak to. There are things going on in your life that God's expecting you to rebuke. Oh, listen to me. There are things that you need to deal with, things that you have to say by His voice. This will not take place in my life anymore. And then what is naturally in an uproar because of what's unnatural begins to smooth out. One of my best messages I've ever preached, you can go get it on the podcast. It's, it says, you have the power to calm. He gave it to you. Jesus expected them to handle this storm. This was not something that caught them off guard in, in a way that they were unprepared as seamen. They, they spent their life on this sea. They knew if it was going to rain or not. This was something supernatural that the enemy had sent to stop them. So you have to understand, we all have the same faith. We all live in the same world. We all have the same option to believe. But you have to take ownership. Is this ministering to you this morning? So I, I've got one more thing and then we're done. <clears throat> Don't hear anything but your faith. Once God speaks to you, do not confer with anyone else. There are too many people in this church and every other church on the planet that want somebody's opinion on what God said. It does not matter Amen. your opinion on what God said. He said it. I believe it. That's enough. You cannot go to somebody who doesn't have the same life experience or prayer life you have and expect them to agree with what God says. Listen, I'm not, I'm not demeaning people. Please listen. If I go to Miss Ann and say, what is the Lord saying to you about this under the unction of the Holy Ghost? And God has talked to her about this. And I've done this before. I trust her. I, tr I trust her. I go, what do you think about this? But if the Lord says, this is what's happening, I don't run to people and ask. Do you understand the difference? Uh, this is a teaching day. Please understand today's a teaching day because we're moving into a new season of our nation. Regardless of how this stuff shakes out with all these court battles, and don't think for one minute, there ain't fixing to be a few of them. We have to remember that we are not of this world. That no matter how chaotic it is, you live in a bubble of peace if you want to. You have what comes out of you. You live in what comes out of you. You are pressured, and when you're pressured, what comes out of you is who you are. You have got to get to a place where you own what God has said to you. The Bible says that there is no private interpretation of the Word. That means everybody can walk in it. Everybody. You cannot. You cannot decipher a Christian by their height, their weight, their beauty, their markings, you can only see Christianity by faith. That's the only way. And God did it that way. The most brilliant and people like me who are dumb as a box of rocks can all walk in it. Because that's the only way that it's equal. And listen to me. Please, please hear what I'm saying. Jesus came. And murder was put on him, and shame was put on him, and pain was put on him, and his body was torn apart to cover you for such a time as this. And now, oh, y'all think I'm preaching about the election. I'm preaching about the season of your life you're in. Because it's time for us to come up out of some things that we've been stuck in for a while. It's time for us to take ownership. And when you take ownership, you treat the thing you own differently. Adam fell from discerning to learning. 
Now, what does that look like? Here's what that looks like. Adam walked up into a garden that was supernatural and would have supernatural meals. Think about this. The Bible says that his job was to tend the garden and to grow the garden, not to work the garden. Then immediately when he falls from discerning to learning, he had to learn how to dig the trench and grow things. The Bible says he had, by the stroke of his hand, had to eke out an existence. Look up the word eke. That's hard work. Listen, he was out of the garden, and he had to come out of where seed was to try to grow something. To do that, he had to learn what would grow. Which means he went through a season, listen to me, he went through a season of wondering, was he even going to have food? That was not God's design. And that's not God's design for all of us. We are under a new covenant. We are under a new opportunity. We are back to original intent. You are in a place that you can live supernaturally if you take ownership of your relationship with your father. And he arose and he rebuked the wind. He said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. Now, this is my final point and then I'm done. <clears throat> if Adam had to learn how to live. Now, I'm going to take a left turn here for just a second. Go through, go through and read the Old Testament it took these guys almost a thousand years to die. The body had to learn how to die. We've perfected it now. We've perfected it now. We, we can find anything and turn it into something and it takes somebody out. I had a friend of mine, very close friend of mine actually, he was an older gentleman. He went to the dentist, had a tooth pulled. When they pulled the tooth, they found out that he had some kind of infection and, and a small tumor in the bone that was operable. It was no problem. But he was so life-tired, he said, you know what, whatever. He was dead in two weeks. Just let it take a... We cho he chose that. He, will he was a Word of Faith guy. He will tell you I chose it. He, he said to us, I'm choosing to go. You, you do know you can do that. I don't have time to deal with that. Anyway, the body had to learn how to die. We have got to learn how to live because we've been taught by this world system for so long that things have to be a certain way. And none of those things line up to the Word. And when we line up to the Word, that doesn't mean that things won't happen. We, life is life. But those in the household of faith, even if your race is ended early, up until that moment, the joy, the peace, and the life you could live if you don't live by learning, but discerning. Amen? Stand to your feet with me. I want to pray for you. I know well, I hope you enjoyed the message tonight. We're going we're gonna to wrap this thing up strong. We're going to pray before we all turn our, all our devices off. But I want you to know that April and I love you so very much. We pray for you all the time. The Becoming Center men are always praying for you. We're always here. You can always send us a message. You can go to gatheringchurch.life and reach out to us. You can also get all of our content there. You can go watch videos. You can listen to our podcast. Anything that we've done, it's all archived right there for you. You can also do your giving there online. You can click on the Give button, and it will take you to an app called Tithely, and just go through that. But remember, make sure you put your email address in there for your receipt. That's how people are having some trouble, and we want to make sure that people are aware that when you put that email address in there, it makes everything go a little smoother. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that because a lot of people have been asking. We're going to pray, and then we're going to call it a night, and we're looking looking forward to hearing great reports from this message. Father, I thank you. First of all, for the people that are watching this tonight, I thank you that people that may come across this video in the future. Lord, I'm believing you for their hearts to be turned towards you. I'm believing you for people to be saved. I'm believing you for people to see your goodness, Lord. If we would have taught you correctly, God, there would have never been any fear. So I thank you that tonight we're learning to love you correctly, learning to walk closer to you correctly. And Lord, as we give, as we do things financially, we're believing you for a harvest in the lives of people. Thank you that every budget of this church is met, that the generosity of these wonderful people, Lord, you're giving back into their lives. You're blessing their business. You're blessing their finances. You're blessing their income. God, we thank you 
that we will hear great reports, not only physically, not only financially, not only spiritually, not only emotionally, but that hearts are being mended, minds are being made whole, relationships are being put back together. And Lord, I thank you that Sunday morning when we come in here, great things will be said about what you did through this message tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, have a great night. We will see you Sunday morning in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. I love you so much. We'll see you soon.